This video will illustrate how to create a staff work schedule factoring in consecutive days off. Here's the data for our problem. A hospital emergency room needs the following number of nurses. Monday needs a minimum of four nurses on staff, Tuesday needs three, etc. Our requirement for this problem is to develop a viable schedule to minimize the number of full-time nurses and make sure that each gets two consecutive days off. All right, let's see what we can come up with. Let's start by putting together a table with a column for every day of the week and one for each step we'll take. The first step is to list the minimum required staff for each day from the data. So four for Monday, three for Tuesday, all the way to five for Sunday. Next, we look for the two smallest staff requirements that are consecutive. Here we see Tuesday and Wednesday with a total of three and two nurses are required. To begin step two, we keep those lowest values and then we go ahead and subtract one from each of the remaining days. That results in three for Monday and Thursday, six on Friday, seven on Saturday, and four on Sunday. Now we repeat the identification of the two smallest consecutive values, which are still Tuesday and Wednesday, with three and two nurses required. Now begin step three by retaining those values and then subtract one from each remaining day. That results in two on Monday, five on Friday, six and three on Saturday and Sunday respectively. Note that we didn't subtract one from Tuesday or Wednesday because there was a preceding day off on each of those days. Then we identify the two smallest consecutive values in step three. They are two and two on Wednesday and Thursday. We then start step four by retaining those values and then subtracting one from the remaining days, leaving us with one on Monday, two on Tuesday, four, five, and two for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday respectively. Again, identify the two smallest consecutive values in step four, which are one and two on Monday and Tuesday. Start step five by retaining those values and then go ahead and subtract one from each of the remaining days. Repeat the identification of the smallest consecutive values in step five, which are one and one on Wednesday and Thursday. Start step six by retaining those values and then subtract one for the remaining days, leaving zero for Monday and Sunday, one on Tuesday, and two and three on Friday and Saturday. Once again, we identify the smallest consecutive values, which this time are Sunday and Monday at zero each. Retain those values into step seven and subtract one from the remaining days. Now you see all the days are zero except for Friday and Saturday with one and two respectively. Again, select the two lowest consecutive values. Here we selected Monday and Tuesday, but you could also use other days such as Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday and Monday again. Retain those values into step eight, then subtract one from the remaining days. Finally, we're left with one on Saturday and that's the end. Now we can take all that work and turn it into a staff schedule where on Monday we have five nurses on shift, four on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, five on Thursday, and eight on both Friday and Saturday, and then seven on Sunday. We can then compare the final number of nurses to the minimum number for each day from the data to determine if we have too many or too few full-time equivalents. As you can see, the only day where we have the minimum number of nurses on staff is Saturday. Monday through Thursday, have one more nurse scheduled than required, and Saturday has two extra nurses. Having excess full-time equivalents is usually unavoidable when we schedule only full-time staff that require consecutive days off. If we were able to use part-time staff, we would be able to reduce or eliminate the number of full-time staff scheduled.